Hello, church, family, and friends. It's Pastor John back again for another midweek service. I just had a couple of thoughts I wanted to share with you and hopefully encourage you in the Lord and motivate you maybe for these next few days that you have ahead here. There are so many things that we're in need of right now. There are those that are watching this today that have physical ailments that are sick and going through hard things in their physical body. Um, There are many that are struggling financially. The jobless claims are up and there are people who are fearful about how they're going to pay their next, uh, next month's bills. It's a scary, scary time. In fact, there are so many in our nation that are gripped with fear and just don't know what to do with the information that is being thrown at them day after day. Our natural tendency in times like this would be to go to people that we trust and love and ask them for help or to ask them for wisdom about what it is that we need to do next. But the scary part about the time that we find our, ourselves in right now is that nobody really knows. Uh, answers are very hard to find. The good news for you today is that I know the answer to the question of what's next for you. So it's it's kind of good and it's kind of bad because it is a kind of a two-part answer. The first part I can definitely help you with. The question is what's next for us or how do we know what to do next? And the answer is that we need the wisdom from God. God is willing and loves to give his children wisdom, and that's what we need more than anything right now in this time. Now, the the difficult thing about that answer is there's a part of it that no one can answer for you but God himself. So there's a broad answer, which is we need wisdom from God, and then there is an individual answer, and that is specifically for you, from the throne room of God, and there's only one way that you can obtain that information. Now, in the Old Testament, wisdom is seen as a person, wisdom personified often as a woman. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, it says that, Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. Um, wisdom as seen is seen in the Old Testament as something that we can acquire. In fact, it is put on the same level as silver and gold and commodities that we can gather in. In Proverbs chapter 4, 6 and 7, it says, Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs you all that you have, get understanding. We see that this wisdom that comes from God is the most important thing that we can possess. In fact, Solomon possessed everything. He was the richest man in the history of the world. And wisdom was the thing that he cherished the most. Even though he had the riches of the world, it was wisdom That was that thing that centered him, anchored him, and gave him his sense of of well-being and his sense of purpose. We also see that it says that um, wisdom is more valuable than silver and gold. And if you're going to get something in this hour, that we should seek to gain wisdom and that wisdom from God. Now, the question is, can we get wisdom through earthly means? Uh, And by earthly means, I'm speaking of, can we watch television conferences? Can we uh, can we rely on the people that we see on the on the news and those kinds of things to give us the wisdom that we need to get us where we want to be? And the answer to that is no. And the reason that the answer to that is no is because There is a difference between the wisdom of God and the wisdom of man. And if we try to lean in on the wisdom of men, 
then we're going to fall. In fact, we're going to fall hard. But if we will lean into God, and if we will seek the wisdom that only He can give for us individually and specifically, then we will find that there is peace and hope that, uh, that is promised to us. So how do we get this wisdom from God? In James chapter 1, verse 5, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, that's me, right? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives liberally to all without reproach, and it will be given to you. So it sounds pretty easy, right? If you lack wisdom, ask God because he has it. Um, he has he has more than you could ever need, more than you could ever acquire, and it will be given to you. This is a promise that we have from God. So why is that not? Uh, why are people not uh, seeking God, and why are people not filled with the wisdom of God? Well, it goes on to say that you have not because you ask not. So there are those who will not ask God for wisdom, and those people shouldn't believe that they will receive wisdom from God. But then it says that there are those who um, ask amiss. They ask the wrong way. And uh, that basically means that they're asking with the wrong motives or the wrong purpose. Like they're asking God for something that's going to meet a need other than fulfilling the will of God in their life. and. And basically, it says that you shouldn't believe that you're going to receive that if it's just for you and it's not for God. But we do have a promise that if we ask God and um, we seek God, that he will give us the wisdom that we desire. So I was thinking, how, how do I know that what I'm getting in my mind and what I'm feeling in my heart how do I know if this is true wisdom that's coming from God? And James is going to answer this question as well in James chapter 3, verse 17. He's going to give us some characteristics and some qualities of what the wisdom of God looks like in our life. Here's what he says. And he's contrasting the wisdom of man with the, with the wisdom of God. And he says this of the wisdom of God. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. Let me unpack that just a little bit. First of all, it's pure. This means that it is undivided, that it is chaste, that it is pure. This kind of wisdom that comes from above is refined and it is focused entirely on one thing, and that is whatever God has called us to do. It's, it's laser focused in on the will of God for your life. Then it says that it's peace loving. It places a high value on easing conflict. So many of us are filled with conflict right now in every area of our life. Jesus is the Prince of Peace, and he longs to speak peace into our lives. And the wisdom that comes from above will always bring peace into your life. The storm that rages on the inside will die down when the peace of God hits it. Think about Jesus, even whenever uh, he was about to be arrested. It says that the high priest's servant came uh, with those people that would arrest Jesus, and Peter cuts his ear off, but then Jesus speaks peace into it, and he, he heals the guy's ear, and he speaks peace into the situation. Or think about the disciples out in the boat in the midst of the tempest. Jesus speaks peace into their storm. The wisdom of God in your life is going to speak peace into your storm. It says that it's considerate. It values or thinks about what's going on in your life and how that affects others around you. 
a lot of times we can find an answer to a problem, but it only fixes it for us. It doesn't do anything for the people around us. In other words, we have selfish motives in what we're doing. The peace of God, the wisdom of God, will always be considerate about other people. Think about Jesus, what he did in his life. It wasn't about satisfying his needs. It was about satisfying um, the will of God, and it was about meeting the needs of everyone. So is the wisdom that God is speaking to your mind and speaking to your heart, is it considerate of other circumstances, other times, uh, other people? Is it more than just an immediate fix to an immediate need? It is full of mercy and good fruit. If God speaks it to you, then it's going to yield good fruit. How do you know if a person is a true believer in God? Scripture says that you will know them by their fruit. Galatians 5 gives us the fruit of the Spirit, the things to look for in the lives of a person that is dedicated to God and is filled with the Spirit of God. They will have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. They will be overflowing with the fruits of the Spirit of God. And lastly, they're impartial and they are sincere. So the wisdom of God is not half-hearted. Um, it is fully sincere. It doesn't measure other people by social status or bank account. It is the genuine love of God that reaches out to all people at all times. God has wisdom for you today, and he wants to impart you with that wisdom. So in closing, here's what I'm asking you or challenging you to do. If you need wisdom, ask God for that wisdom, and he will give it to you. Now, as we seek God, not seek wisdom, as we seek God, that's where we're going to be filled with wisdom. In fact, the Spirit of God is called the Spirit of Wisdom, the Spirit of Truth, and he will infill us and give us the ability to operate with the wisdom of God. Um, Whenever we ask and whenever we um, seek God, as the deer pants for, for the water, so my soul longs after you. As we, as we pursue God, then wisdom will be a byproduct of that relationship. But God is calling you into his presence and he's calling you into a time of deeper devotion. Don't miss that in this time. If you miss in this time that God is wanting to communicate with you on a deeper level, you are missing something in this time that God has given us that we are uh, separated from people and separated from work. He's calling us to himself. So the second thing is believe that you receive. Believe that the things that God has for you, he wants to give you. Expect that God wants to fill you with his spirit. Expect that he wants to bless you with wisdom. Be, be ready to receive from your good, good father. He, he knows what you need and he longs to give it to you. If we being evil know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will our father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask? When you ask, believe that you receive. And then number three, whenever you hear from God and whenever things start to kind of uh, pop into your mind and pop into your heart and you start to uh, hear the Spirit of God speaking to you, line up those things that you hear with the Word of God and with the character and nature of God to see if they truly are from Him. There are false voices out there that want you to follow them. But Jesus said that my voice know my sheep and the voice of another they will not follow. So let's follow the voice of the good shepherd into all that he has for us and allow him to fill us with wisdom so that we can know in this hour what we need to do next. I believe that that's the answer to the question. Now it's, now it's for each one of us to seek the one who has wisdom 
believe that he will impart us with that wisdom. Amen. Can I pray for you? Father, I thank you for the people that are listening to this right now. God, I simply ask on their behalf that you would give them wisdom and that you would just reveal yourself to them in a way that they have not known you, that you would help them to know, Lord, in the decisions that they're making, what they should do next. We love you, thank you, and praise you, for you are good. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Love you guys. We'll see you soon.